Thank you, everybody, for coming to the Aaron Torres Podcast YouTube page. If you could do me a quick favor, see that little black subscribe button at the bottom of your screen, go ahead, click that black subscribe button. Really does help our audience grow, really does help our channel grow, really does help and mean more than you could possibly know. So go ahead, hit that little black subscribe button. Also, thank you to our presenting sponsor, Betfred Sportsbook and the Betfred Sportsbook app. Bet 50 on any game, get 250 in free bets. Thank you again to Betfred. Thank you again to you. Now, here is the video that you came here for. Very quickly, in conjunction with this piece of news, we did get an official, you know, coaching change on Thursday. Patrick Ewing has been let go as the head coach of the Georgetown Hoyas. And this is not the moment in time where I'm going to throw dirt on Patrick Ewing's grave. I thought, you know, I remember I was working at FoxSports.com at the time that he was hired. He was the only guy that made sense. Remember, this guy wasn't just an icon at Georgetown as a player. He was a very well-respected coaching assistant in the NBA. And he was a guy that many people thought was going to get an NBA head coaching job. And so Georgetown kind of snagged this guy before an NBA team could. And at the time, I think we all thought it was the right move. But clearly it wasn't going to work out. Six years, uh, five losing seasons. The only season he did not have a losing record was the year of 2021, the COVID year, where they actually won the Big East tournament um, and made the NCAA tournament. And so if you go back to that season, it's kind of wild to think about. So his only year above 500, or his only year at 500 was 2021. They go 13 and 13. And that was after winning four games in four days at the Big East tournament. Remember, that was the year that there was no fans in the stands. They also got the number one seed Villanova without Colin Gillespie. He had just gotten hurt the, like a week before. And so really it just, it brings an end to the Patrick Ewing era at Georgetown. It's sad. It's disappointing. It, it's, you know, in some ways it's kind of like the Bayheim stuff, right? You wanted it to end better. You wanted this to be the move for Georgetown that worked and brought them back. And it just didn't happen. Six years in, one season of finishing at 500. And the last two years, you just absolutely cratered out. Six and 25 last year, 0 and 19 in the Big East. This year, 7 and 25, 2 and 18 in the Big East. And Patrick Ewing was officially let go on Thursday afternoon. What's interesting now is what's next. And what I will say is that this is one of the more unique coaching carousel situations that we've seen in a long time. And let me explain why. It's because ever, you know, there are great programs that are replacing coaches all the time. St. John's might be doing it in a few weeks. You know, whoever. UConn did it a few years ago with Dan Hurley. UNLV's done it. North Carolina's done it. Duke's done it. Whatever. What's different about Georgetown, though, is that for the first time, basically in the modern era, this is a coaching hire that is going to be made without the presence of John Thompson, the iconic former coach. Georgetown head coach. If you remember, John, so let me just kind of do a 30,000 thing, right? So John Thompson, of course, greatest coach in school history, one of the great coaches in the history of college basketball. But when he retired in the late 90s, 1999, I believe, he has basically, he did stick around the program until he passed away just a few years ago. And because of it, because he's such an icon, because he is the most famous person associated with the school alongside Alonzo Mourning and Patrick Ewing and Dikembe Mutombo, he has had a big sway in the decision-making on coaches. Some would say he's been making the decisions, again, up until his passing a few years ago. If you look at the history of Georgetown hires, after John Thompson, here's who's gotten the job. His lead assistant, Craig Eshrick, took over for a few years. When he got fired, John Thompson the third, JT3, took over. When JT3 ran out of time six years ago, Patrick Ewing, the most iconic player in the John Thompson era, took over. And so I just bring it up because every hire since John Thompson retired has had John Thompson's fingerprints all over it. Well, because he passed away, because he's no longer with us, that's what makes this hire so interesting. It's going to be the first time in forever that they can go out of the family and see what's available. The big questions are what actually is available. Now, as I just said a minute ago, I think at the end of the day, the, the first candidate, the most obvious candidate, the guy that I think they're going to go after I do think Georgetown wants Rick Pitino and the money is there and the, you know, the buyout money for John Thompson is there. And it feels like Rick Pitino is the guy that they will go get if Rick Pitino is not 
the head coach at St. John's. At this point, as I just said, I think St. John's, the tide is starting to turn there. But if St. John's hesitates, if St. John's waits, if St. John's is indecisive, Georgetown, I believe, is ready to step in and name uh, name Rick Pitino its next head coach. So I will see. Keep in mind, St. John's, as I record, still has a sitting head coach in Mike Anderson. If he's still there, this you know, if Rick Pitino's not coaching after this weekend, if the season ends for Iona before the NCAA tournament, and Rick Pitino is available, and Mike Mike Anderson is still the head coach Monday and a Tuesday and a Wednesday and a Thursday of next week, Rick Pitino might not wait around. So that's the first name to keep in mind. The second name, I'll, I'll just give you a few names, and and I think it's again, it's really hard to know who's a candidate and who's not. Because ultimately, what we're trying to figure out is they haven't made a hire in the modern coaching era without John Thompson. So outside of Rick Pitino, a couple names do stand out. The first one is Mike Bray. Yes, Mike Bray, who just retired at Notre Dame. And I think we talked about it on this show, but I know a few of you have asked me. Because Mike Bray announced his retirement. I'm leaving Notre Dame. It's time. I've been here 20 plus years. And then about three weeks later, he had an interview with Jeff Goodman where he said, oh, no, 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 no. I'm retiring from Notre Dame, but I plan on keeping coaching. And a lot of you asking, well, Torres, what does that mean? And does it make sense? And why would that happen? And how did he quit? But he's still coaching. And as I said at the time, to me, that pointed to one of two things. Either it was him letting Georgetown know that he wanted that job or Georgetown telling him, hey, we're interested in you, but you got to let the world, we can't hire you out of retirement. you got to let the world know that you want to coach. And so for the background, I, a lot of people probably sitting there saying, why Mike Bray? He's been at Notre Dame forever. Bottom line is this guy is from the Maryland, D.C. area. He coached at DeMatha High School, one of the great iconic high school programs in America. He's a D.C. guy through and through. And so for years, there's always been speculation that he wants to get back to the D.C. area. His first head coaching job was at Delaware. He's been at Notre Dame since the early 2000s. And so my hunch is that he unretired from Notre Dame to let the world know that I want to coach and this is the job that I want. I don't think Mike Bray is coming back to, again, coach at uh, wherever, fill in the blank, Georgia Southern, which just opened today, or Cal, which just opened on, on Thursday. I think he wants this job. This is probably the only job he would take, but it'll be interesting to see if Georgetown would actually make a move. Obviously, Mike Bray is in his mid-60s right now, about 62, 63, so early 60s. But if you hire him, it's not a 10-year thing. It's not a 20-year thing. It's probably a five, six-year thing to get back on track. The other name, I will say, that keeps popping up, and I would say I I don't want to say that I don't understand it, but it, it keeps popping up too much to the point that it feels like there has to be something there. That's Providence head coach Ed Cooley. And Ed Cooley, I don't think people realize, has done an incredible job at Providence. Providence is one of those schools I think we think they have this incredible history. Ed Cooley is basically the best coach that they've ever had, at least in the modern era of college basketball, okay? So they won the Big East last year. And basically from 2014 on, they made the tournament in 2014, 15, 16, 17, 18, five straight years. That was the first time in school history that they made the NCAA tournament for five straight years. And as a matter of fact, you go back to 1990, Before Ed Cooley, the 24 years before that, they made five total NCAA tournaments. He makes five NCAA tournaments from 2014 on. Plus 2022, plus this year they're going to make the tournament as well. Question is, why would Ed Cooley leave? Well, one, Georgetown's a better job. Providence fans don't get mad. It's nothing personal. It's just the truth. Bottom line, Georgetown, it's it's a better job. Two, I do think it's kind of interesting that the, the situation at Georgetown. So if you go back to this past weekend, Georgetown, or excuse me, Providence, on senior day, I thought this was really interesting. Did you see what happened? Did you see what happened at Providence on senior day? They booed the Providence Friars at home. Ed Cooley's son was tweeting about it. It was a weird deal. And I don't want to say, like, the fan base has turned on him. I don't think it's that at all. But Ed Cooley just finished his, or he's in the middle of his 11th year at at Providence. I know he's from Providence. He's from the the, the Rhode Island area. But it does feel like maybe it's time for him to move on. I don't know if that's actually what he wants. But there's enough speculation that it makes me think that he would seriously consider it. Now, keep in mind, he was a candidate at Maryland last year and got a big extension. 
And that to me is the question we have to ask ourselves with Ed Cooley is really two things. One, would he want the job? But then two, on top of that, um, what's his buyout? Because remember, Providence is a private school. It's hard to know exactly what it would take to get him out of his contract. But if they can get him out of his contract, I think it's a job that he would absolutely consider. And again, there's just too much smoke to the idea of Ed Cooley. It's at least a possibility in my mind. Again, I think a lot of it depends on the job situation. By the way, imagine that. Ed Cooley to Providence, maybe Rick Pitino to St. John's. What happens at Providence at that point? We could see a lot of turnover in the Big East. The final obvious name to me is a guy that a lot of you might not know. His name's Micah Shrewsbury. Okay, Micah Shrewsbury is currently the head coach at Penn State. Uh, Penn State is in the middle of a season in which they're right on the bubble of the NCAA tournament. I don't know if they'll make it or not. But in year two, at probably the toughest job in the Big Ten, not named Northwestern, he's killing it. He's doing really well. They play well. They play a fun style. And it's clear this guy knows how to build a program in the portal era. Two years in, they're competing for NCAA tournament burst. They're really well coached if you watch him. And he's got a little bit of a track record, too. Coached under Brad Stevens with the Boston Celtics. Coached under Matt Painter at Purdue under two separate instances before he got this Penn State job. So this guy has the credibility the the background, the the kind of, if you will, street cred among basketball people. But now he's been a head coach and he's doing it. And so he's the one where, if you just don't want Mike Bray because he's too old, and Ed Cooley says no, and Rick Pitino, whatever, he's the one that I, I don't think says no if he's offered it, but he's the name to keep in mind. Tell you, the Pitino stuff is interesting. The Ed Cooley stuff is interesting. Keep an eye. We will continue to discuss this as time goes on. But those are the four names that come to mind for me for Georgetown.